Here's why Jontae Davis will never be beaten. But before we get into that, let's talk about his past. Let's talk about what he has already done in the sport of boxing. Let's start off with Gamboa. Him versus Gamboa, one of the best entertaining fights that Jontae Davis has had. Gamboa is a good fighter. Jontae Davis is a good fighter. So what do we see in that fight? We see Jontae Davis take complete control of that fight, knocking down Gamboa more than once. Clear victory for Jontae Davis. Now his next fight was Leo Santa Cruz. We all know what happened this year. One of the best knockouts for Jontae Davis and probably one of the best knockouts for the sport of boxing in that year. Nice uppercut. Everybody was going crazy. The arena was going crazy. Leo Santa Cruz did not get up from that. It's not like he knocked him down. Five seconds later, he gets up. He was down. The refs and the medical assistants had to get in that ring. Another clear victory for Jontae Davis. Now moving on to Barrios. This fight was a little tricky for Jontae Davis. In the beginning of the round, Jontae Davis was losing. Floyd Mayweather even went to Jontae Davis' corner and told him, hey, you need to step it up. On the unofficial card, you're down on points. And then what did Jontae Davis do? He started putting a little bit more pressure. He started timing his shots a little better. And he eventually hurt Barrios and had him rolling all over the goddamn ring. He clearly won that fight against Barrios. Another clear win for Jontae Davis. Now moving on to Isaac Cruz. I can't say Jontae Davis really won this fight. Obviously, he won it by the judges. But I can't really say, and I don't think Jontae Davis could clearly say that he beat Isaac Cruz in that fight. I don't think he did. At least I don't think it was a clear win because not only did Isaac Cruz get a late notice to fight Jontae Davis, so he didn't get that much time to train, but it was kind of a tiptoe. It was kind of like they were both stumbling, couldn't really find their shots. But you do got to give it up to Jontae Davis because he did hurt his left hand when trying to throw an uppercut. So you do got to give it up to him considering the fact that he still beat Isaac Cruz with an injured arm. Another victory for Jontae Davis. And now... Probably one of the most hyped fights and one of the most funniest fights for Jontae Davis, considering the fact that he fought one of the best trash talkers, Roly Romeo. One of the most entertaining fights only because the press conferences and the build-ups were funny as hell to watch. Roly trolling Jontae Davis, trying to talk smack about Jontae Davis, saying that I'm a better fighter, he's short, he's this and this and that. But we kind of knew what was coming. We kind of knew that Roly Romeo is one of them boxers who just talk, but when they get into the ring with the real one, somebody who's on a different level, then they get their ass beat 100%. And this is exactly what ended up happening. Obviously, we've seen that Roller Romeo in the beginning of the rounds. He was trying to put pressure on Jonathan Davis, you know, trying to hurt Jonathan Davis. It didn't end up working. Jonathan Davis just seen him as, you know what, he's just trying to put pressure on me. He's trying to make me feel scared. I don't fear it. He can't hurt me with him shots. So then what ended up happening? Jonathan Davis started timing his shots a little better. And that's when he hit him and he dropped Roller Romeo down. Roller Romeo couldn't come back for it. The ref ended the fight. Another win for Jonathan Davis. Who did Jonathan Davis fight next? He fought some nobody, Hector Garcia. Now, I understand why he did this. He needed a warm-up fight before the Ryan Garcia fight, which Ryan Garcia didn't do. That's why he didn't perform as well. But we'll get into that later. Absolutely dominated Hector Garcia. Again, a nobody, but absolutely dominated Garcia. I think supposedly that Hector Garcia couldn't even see after the fight, after punching him so hard. Who's the other opponent that he fought this year? Javante Davis. He fought Ryan Garcia. And arguably, in his prime, he's still young. Ryan Garcia has the most energy at this age. Now, what happened in this fight? It was neck and neck, but Ryan Garcia didn't have that much experience. Kind of rusty, hasn't fought in a while. You know, his fundamentals ain't there. Even Javante Davis called this out in the press conference. His fundamentals ain't there. All he has is talent, which is his power and his speed. So what did Javante do in this fight? He absolutely schooled. Ryan Garcia absolutely dominated him, dropped him twice. Now, the first drop, okay, it was a clip, okay, it wasn't that serious. And then later in the rounds, we just seen Ryan Garcia just getting drained out, hitting him with them body shots, and then he catched him with a good one, and that's what knocked him down. Ryan Garcia could not get up from that. Okay, so you guys didn't just come here for the past and the present. You guys came for why he wouldn't be beaten in the future. Well, let's see his future opponents. Shakur, what does Shakur really have that Javante Davis hasn't seen yet? Not his power, not his speed. We've seen him fight Ryan Garcia, not his speed, not his talent, because we've seen him fight some great opponents. So what does Shakur have that could be Javante Davis? Not anything. We see it in Shakur's fights that he gets clipped and he gets caught with a lot of punches. Now, if Javante Davis catches Shakur with one of those, he's absolutely done for it. Now, let's look at another opponent, Lomachenko. Now, we've seen Lomachenko's performance against Devin Haney. I honestly don't think that Lomachenko has the energy and is too old now 
to be Javante Davis, considering the fact that Javante Davis is in his prime. Now, let's see another opponent, Devin Haney, also young, very talented, but I also don't think that he has any power, any speed. All he really has is a jab. When we've seen Javante Davis can eat those, we've never seen Javante Davis get rocked, anything. So for Devin Haney to say that he could beat Javante Davis by skill, where we've seen that that was impossible even by Leo Santa Cruz or by Barrios, because we've seen that he could be losing the rounds, but then he clip you with a good one and you're gone. And now let's get into the people that I think that could probably beat him, that could probably beat Javante Davis. And there's only three out there that I truly believe that could be Javante Davis. And the first one is me, but we'll get into that later. The second one is Tiofimo Lopez. Now hear me out on this one. Hear me on this one, because I know a lot of people are going to be like, oh, this guy doesn't know boxing. He's talking out of his ass. We all seen the performance that he put on against Taylor. We all knew that he dominated that fight. He also has power. We seen the performance against him and Lomachenko. Absolutely dominated Lomachenko. So when we talk about speed, talent, IQ, Teofimo checks everything off. He checks all those boxes off. So when I say that a great fight, maybe not beat him, but a great fight, Teofimo Lopez will bring that for Javante Davis. Now who else? Who's a third opponent that might be able to be Javante Davis? Now, this is a wild one, but I think that if Terrence Crawford goes back down in weight, I honestly think that he could beat Javante Davis. Now, again, I don't think Terrence Crawford has any plans of going down to 140 again, but let's say if he did, he will absolutely give Javante Davis a great fight. Who knows? He might even beat him. Now, who's the next opponent? Like I said, myself, maybe if I get in the ring one day, I might give Javante Davis a good fight. My right hand, he gets clipped with one of those. He might not last after the fifth round. But again, there's just speculations and just assumptions at the end of the day. Who knows, Javante Davis might become the greatest fighter of all time. 